Does your older or basic gas grill look like this when you're cooking? Does it have hot spots, making it difficult to control the heat so the food is either burnt or undercooked? Are you experiencing grill envy, eyeing grills with heat tube burners, heat shields, heat plates, or heat grates inside? These features keep flames at bay and promote controlled, even cooking, resulting in moist, flavorful barbecued foods. This is Steve DeMossi, and welcome to Uncharted DIY. Maybe you're thinking that the only way to get these new features is to buy one of these better performing, but costly new grills. If you're like me, you might have been a bit shocked by the prices of a new grill. Did you know you can upgrade a basic grill to make it perform like a higher end, much more expensive model? I just converted my very basic model that only had small heat plate covers, also called heat tents, and nothing else to control the flame. There were hot and cold spots, making it cook unevenly, and if anything dripped off the food while cooking, it instantly lit on fire. I did this conversion for about $50 and half an hour's work, and wow, did it make a difference. It's like cooking on a whole new grill. I just wish I'd done this 10 years ago. This easy upgrade can be added to most grills with simple tools. You can do this great project too, and I'll show you how. My grill had seen some years, but it had the basic stuff to make it a nice grill. It didn't make any sense to trash it when all it needed was a way to even out the heat and keep the food from incinerating. I had heard about ceramic briquettes. They help control flare-ups, they absorb the heat of the flame and radiate it back out in an even pattern. The cone or pyramid shaped ones allow drippings that don't vaporize to roll off without buildup, so they're self cleaning. They last much longer than lava rock, and since they're smooth, they don't catch on fire due to the grease and char buildup. Compared to the small heat tents, the much larger surface area provides more room for juices to land on the briquettes and vaporize giving the food that delicious barbecue flavoring. But my grill didn't have any way to add such great features. Some grills come with rock grates where lava rock or ceramic briquettes could go, but mine had no such thing. So once again, DIY comes to the rescue. My solution was to make my own upgrades by adding rock grates and ceramic briquettes. There are only two steps in this project adding a rock grate to support the briquettes and putting the briquettes on the grate. Pretty easy, right? All that's needed for this project is a rock grate, ceramic briquettes, and self-drilling screws. I have links to the set of grilling grids I used as rock grates, the briquettes, and the screws in the description below and on my website at uncharteddiy.com. For tools, all you'll need is a drill, a small twist bit sized to match the screws, a nut driver bit or wrench, and a hammer and nail. Space for the new grate is the biggest consideration because the briquettes do require some airflow around them, but most grills can be modified like this. If there's enough room to add the grate above the heat plate and have a bit of distance to the bottom of the cooking grate, that's all it takes. The top surface of the new rock grate should sit between a half an inch and two inches above the heat plate. There should be about a two to three inch gap between the rock grate and the cooking surface. If you've got that space in your grill, you're good to go. Adding a rock grate isn't very difficult, but the grate must be stable so the briquettes don't slide all over or get broken. I put screws in the grill housing to support mine. But sometimes, the same surface that supports your heat plate can support the new grate. The exact size of the rock grate is not very important, as long as it can be supported front to back to keep the grate from falling in. The grate doesn't have to cover the whole area either. Side to side and front to back, the grate can be an inch or two away from the body of the grill and still work great. Sorry for the pun. It doesn't have to be a single piece either, and the pieces can overlap, so finding grates that fit is easy. For a setup like mine, where the heat plate is tent-shaped, resting the grate on them wouldn't be stable. 
Instead, I used number 12 2 inch self drilling screws driven into the body walls to support my grate. They're solid and long enough to support a range of grate sizes. I used eight screws for mine since I had two grates to support. Even though these screws are self drilling, it's not easy to drive them in such an awkward space. So I pre drilled the holes using a twist bit about the same size as the tip of the screws. I used an automatic center punch to make a divot in the metal so the drill bit wouldn't skate all over. You can also use a nail and hammer to do the same thing. Because the front and back of the grill body tapers inward, I didn't want the screws to sit in an angle. So after the drill bit just began to bite into the aluminum, I tilted it down so the hole would be drilled level. Next, using a nut driver tip in the drill, I screwed the screws in about half an inch and checked to make sure they were sturdy, and they were nice and strong. You can also use a hex wrench to drive the screws if you don't have a nut driver bit. The grate sat nicely on the screws, so all that was left was to arrange the briquettes. I left space between them so the heat could flow around them, and I didn't worry about getting them all the way to the edges of the grill since I don't cook there anyway. And that was it. A word of warning though, this upgrade worked so well that I almost overcooked the first meal that I made on my converted grill. The last time I cooked pork tenderloins on this grill, it took almost 45 minutes to cook because the oil in the marinade kept catching on fire. I had to turn the flames down, it took forever for the meat to come to temperature, and there was still some serious charring in places. This time, they took 15 minutes. Good thing I checked when I went to turn them again, or we would have had some seriously overdone meat. They were more done than I was shooting for, but they were deliciously juicy. Hmm, faster cooking, juicy tender meat, and a perfect sear? What's not to like? I knew the ceramic briquettes would help, but I'm rather amazed by how well they worked. Now that I know my upgrade was successful, I'll spend a few bucks on high temperature paint for the outside, give it a thorough degreasing inside, and replace the rusting heat plates. I'll have a high performance grill that cooks and looks like new. Since this project worked out so well, I'll be using the grill much more often. It's a pleasure to cook on now. I also treated myself to an LED light that clips onto the handle and provides an even bright light. So now at night, I can see what's cooking. I put a link to this great light in the description below and on the website at uncharteddiy.com. If you try this easy, amazing upgrade to your grill, let me know in the comments how much of a difference it makes. This is Steve, and thanks for watching Uncharted DIY. If you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe so we can continue to bring you high quality DIY content.